Welcome to part 3 of the Entity Framework series. In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can override the default conversions that Entity Framework uses to configure the database and object mapping. In this video, we are going to look at two main concepts, data annotations and the Fluent API. With that being said, let's go to Visual Studio and get to the coding. In the previous video, we understood that Entity Framework we we'll use the default conversions to configure the database and the entity mapping. However, Entity Framework also allows us to override the default conversions using data annotations and the Fluent API. This allows us to specify how we want Entity Framework to configure the database and the object mappings. Now let's take a look at the database to see how Entity Framework configured the tables and the fields using the default conversions. Now here we're going to look at the app database. This database was initialized when the application ran. We have a table called people which maps to the person class. Now under the columns here we see that the person ID field was set to the primary key. Now we also see that the data type was set to int. Here we have another value which is not no. This value simply means that this field cannot be empty. For the name and the address, we see that the type of the data was set to nvar car with a capacity set to max. And we see the value here is set to no. This simply means this value can be left empty. Now we can override the default conversions using data annotations and the Fluent API. To do that, I'm going to add two namespaces to the file. So the namespace is a system component model data annotations namespace. I'm also going to add the second namespace, which is the system component model data annotations schema namespace. If we take a look at the entity class, we notice that Entity Framework took the person ID property and set it to the primary key. This was based on the conversion of naming the property, the name of the class, and adding ID. Now suppose we had another property that we wanted to be the primary key. So here we can simply specify that using data annotations. Now let's say this property was some property. Now to set this property as the primary key, we can simply do that by adding an attribute. And that's the key attribute. So this attribute would tell Entity Framework that this property is the primary key. Now we also notice that Entity Framework will take the name of the class and create the plural of that name. It's going to name the table based on the plural of the name of the class. Now suppose we wanted to map the class to a different table. We can simply do that by adding an attribute and that is the table attribute. Now this attribute allows us to specify the name. So we can simply do that by adding a name. So in this case I'm just going to say my table. On the name and address property, we also noticed that the capacity was set to max. We can also override that behavior. So to do that, I'll simply use another attribute, and this time it's the max length attribute. So this attribute will allow us to specify the number of characters we can store in the single field. So in this case, I can simply set it to 50. I'll do the same for the name. Now the other thing is that for our ID, we noticed that it was set to not know. That simply meant that that ID has to be present. Now we can also do the same for different properties. So we can use the attribute and that's the required attribute. 
So this attribute will simply tell Entity Framework that this field should be present every time we are inserting data into the database. When creating the table, it's going to set the name field to not know. Now, let's go ahead and run the application and look at the database. So what I'm going to do is I'll first delete this database. Then I'll go ahead and run the application. Now, the application runs successfully. Let's close it and take a look at the database. I'll simply refresh this. Now notice under the tables, our table is now named my table. Let's expand this and look at the columns. Notice that the columns include a new property, which is the sum property. And this property is set to the primary key. Now take a look at the name and the address. The data type is set to varka with a capacity of 50. Now if you look at the name, it has a value which is set to not no. That's because we specified that this field should be required. Now, if you take a look at the name of the tables, you notice that the table is prefixed with some text. In this case, DBO. This is the table schema. We can also tell Entity Framework to override the default conversions. So let's go back to the code. Now here in the table attribute, we can add the second parameter. In this case, we can say schema. So we can simply specify by saying, maybe let's say for instance, if the person was in a department, suppose the IT department. So by specifying the second parameter, which is the schema to IT, that's going to override what we see here, which is DBO. So I'll go ahead and delete this database. Then run the application. So the app, the app ran successfully. So I'll close it and take a look at the database. Now we notice this time that the schema is now set to IT. So we can also override the schema using data annotations. Now the other way of achieving this is using the Fluent API. So I'll go ahead and get rid of these attributes and then use the Fluent API approach. Now to use the Fluent API, we're going to override a method that's defined on our DB context class. And this method is the on model creating method. This method is called when the derived context is being initialized. It also passes an object through its parameters of the type DB model builder. We're going to be using this object to override the default conversions. So I'll simply call the object by saying model builder. Then I'll call the entity method. Now the entity method allows me to specify an entity. So in this case, I'll specify the person class because that's the entity we are trying to configure. To configure a primary key on this class, I'll simply call the has key method. So the has key method takes in a lambda expression 
So this lambda expression will allow me to select the property that I want to set as the primary key. So in this case, the person object will be represented by x. Then I'll say x, then some property. So this property will be set as the primary key. Now suppose I had another property. So I'll just create another property. And I'll name this property test property. Now let's say we wanted test property to be the primary key instead. So I'll simply change this to test property. Let's say I wanted to set the capacity for the address. So I'll simply say model builder, then I'll specify the entity Then on the entity, I'll call the property method. The property method also takes in a lambda expression. So for this case, x is going to represent a person. Then I'll get the address. And for the address, I'll call another method, which is the has max length. So within this method, I'll now specify the capacity. So I'll set it to 80. Now we understand that Entity Framework will map the name property to the name column. We can also override this behavior by simply specifying the column that we want the name property to be mapped to. We can also do that using the model builder. So I'll specify the entity then I'll call the property method pass in a lambda expression and this time I'll get the name property. Then I'll call the has column name method. So this method allows me to specify a name. So I'm going to specify it as my first name. So by doing so, I'm telling MDT framework to map the name property to the my name first column. Now using data annotations, we can also do that. With data annotations, we can use the column attribute, then specify a name for that. Now in this case, we want to use the Fluent API. So I'll go ahead and run the application and then take a look at the database. Before doing that, I'll ensure that the database is deleted. So I'll simply delete this database then run the application. So we can see the application ran successfully. I'll go ahead and close it, then take a look at the database. Now here, let's take a look at the columns. Now we notice that the test property field is set to the primary key. And here in the code, we specify that by using the has key method. If we look at the address, the data type is set to var car with a max capacity of 80. And we can see that here. Now for the name column, we see that we have a new column, which is my first name column. So the name property on our person class will simply map to this column. Now, in this video, we have seen that we can override the default conversions that Entity Framework offers using two methods.
data annotations and the Fluent API. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we can query data from the database. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you find this content useful. I'll see you in the next one.